Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen, to episode 23 of Deep in the Novo. Today, we're, me and my host, co-host Sadiq Tuma, are going to be talking about Oklahoma State's 75-68 to 68 victory over UT Arlington, uh, OSU's first victory of the year, the basketball season, in, the, in their first game of the year. Um, and Sadiq, let's start this off by talking about this one number, okay? Five for 20. OSU and UT Arlington got off to a five for 20 start on offense, shooting the ball. When you looked at this game, I mean, you sort of just saw that, like, like you saw um, almost a lethargic effort uh, on, on both ends with UT Arlington taking advantage of it to an extent because of their great defense uh, that they played throughout this game. I, it was, it was weird because you're right. I mean, it, it was definitely a very bad start. And, you know, I went back and watched it last night and, it was a combination of two things. One, I think OSU played really good defense despite the score, and we'll get into why that was later. And two, it was a lot of simple concepts from OSU and this offense. And I think that just may be a product of how – or the fact that Mike Boyden is emphasizing defense and rebounding with such a young squad, such an inexperienced squad, and one where all these players, like they had the same problem last year with Avery Anderson and Chris Harris and all these guys coming in, that all of these guys are – were came in as the best player on their team. Think about Donovan Williams, right? A guy who was scoring 28 a game, taking tough shots, being the number one guy, having the ball in his hands all, all the time to now a role player who just catch and shoots, plays defense, fills gaps, you know, does all the things you need to to be a role player. And it's it's a lot of that. And I think I think in my estimation of my guessing is that that's what he's probably emphasizing all offseason, you know, rebounding and defense. And obviously that came out well this game, but yeah. I think that's kind of why you saw a slow start. And if you watch the game and you just watch the other players, not the guy who has a ball, you'll see that guys are standing around and not just standing around lazily. I mean, they're spacing the floor out, but guys who are good shooters, right? And then you saw just post-ups, one-on-ones, dribble drives, penetration, kickouts, those kind of things. And it was just like simple pick and rolls, things like that, as you saw time and time again. And I think that's kind of, well, that's a lot of what contributed to the slow start. The rustiness, right? You had good three-point looks. I mean, you're gonna people, fans are gonna criticize it because they didn't go in, but they were good looks, a lot of them, and from good shooters as well. And you have Aaron Flavors open the corner, or open wherever you you take it, whoever you have, and it, it was just a little bit of that. But then they really started to find their groove as the game went on. Yeah, I wanted to hone in on that too. Is that um, you know, obviously, you know, talking about sort of this sim- simple offensive attack that OSU had. I, I like the way the pick and rolls worked. I like the way, some, like you said, some of these dribble drives work. Um, and just just penetration, right? Getting inside. And one of the things that stuck out to, to I know you and I, is is the play in the post, too, especially from some of these players. I mean, Matthew Alexander Moncrief, he proved, like, not only is he can he be a bully in the post, he can have some good finesse in the post, too. Um, and that's so, sort of what he was able to do uh, the other day. And, you know, there's, there's other guys too. I mean, the, the, the Boone twins, both of them even showed some, some, some of that in the post. Uh, and my goodness, like all around, you saw some of this. And, and, and then obviously the play of Cade Cunningham, the way he's able to drive inside just with confidence uh, is, is really something of note during this game. Yeah. The simplicity was something that I keep, I'm going back now. I mean, that's something I really hinge on because, you know, when you're in full form when you're a team in basketball, you're not just, Unless you're the Houston Rockets, you're most of the time not just running pick and rolls with a superstar up there. You're doing, you know, you're constantly moving guys around. You're calling plays just about every single down. Now, they did, obviously, it wasn't without avail that they never called a play and never did anything complex. Um, They did from time to time in the half court sets, but the inbounds play, inbound plays, I think that's where you saw some of the handoffs, some of the motion, some of the picks, the stacks. You saw little, little things here and there. But in the half court, more times than not, it was just, you know, Kate Cunningham or Isaac Likely pick and roll. He would drive in, and then UT Arlington did a great job on defense, cutting off the backside of drives. That's why you saw in, like, a split second, you already had someone. And then from there, it just had to be kickouts to, you know, it was a driving kick every time. Kate Cunningham would drive in, had to kick out to a three-point shooter. Isaac Likely would drive in, get trapped, and then have to kick, kick out to a shooter. It's a good shot, but that when they're not going in, I under – like, here's the thing. Like, people are criticizing Kate Cunningham being passive, right? But you have to, right? They're good shots. You're going right in. And yeah, Cade Cunningham can probably bounce around two guys, but take a wide open three from a good shooter like Keelan Boone or Donovan Williams, Chris Harris, right? Uh, Keelan Boone, all these good shooters are out there for a reason. This is a much better shooting team. But that was part of it. It was you have two guys and Isaac Likely and Cade Cunningham who were at their best when they're downhill drivers getting into the paint. 
But the moment you get one, two dribbles in, you're already, you know, stacked by another second UT Arlington deep defender. And that's credit to them. They played tremendous defense. But, and it was a lot of pressure, especially in the second half, when you had that matchup zone where UT Arlington was fe- feisty on the ball. They were attacking the passing lanes for sure. And it was a lot of that. But you saw it. I mean, most more plays than not, especially in the first half, it was just a drive and kick. And then from there, it might be, okay. It, I mean, I'll say this also. They did, they, they did a good job reversing the ball where – you have it on one side and just passing around three point line, find the guy who's who can attack a gap in the defense where the defense is a little unset, or your best playmaker who can just go one on one against it after passing the ball a few times. That's how you get the de- defense just a little bit unbalanced. You, you saw it sometimes where Isaac Fly could be trapped, he would pass out to someone who would pass to Avery Anderson. Avery Anderson would drive in a little bit, pass Isaac Likely. It's like as if you're playing 2K with you know guys not moving. It looked like that at times. And again, I'll say this I think it really is because Mike Boyden didn't have the time to do that. That's just my opinion and what I have seen from that. But it, it was – because you go back to any – I mean, any basketball team ever, <laughs> or even la- last year OSU, you saw the motion. You see the guys getting them open off dribble drives, getting – like you would see a Farron Flavors running off the screen. You would see a Keelan Boone running off the screen. You would see these type of things, the stacks, the motion. These guys are talented. I Like I was saying last night in the video, Farron Flavors Jr. is not just a shooter. He's a guy who could hit off-balance shots. He can drive in, stop on a dime, pull up, fade away. He can do these, some of these things here and there. He's a, he is a shot creator. But if you're just standing there on the three-point line and just a catch-and-shoot guy, you don't, you don't have that same flexibility versus if you get the ball on the move. It's a different, different thing. And that's why you saw a lot of that simplicity. And I think that's kind of what led to um, not a, dis, a disappointing offensive output, but it wasn't clearly the same. And again, it went hand-in-hand hand with the fact that UT Arlington's defense was that good because – if you have a defense that's, you know, hounding and cutting off every single backside, weak side drive, when you have Kate Cunningham and Isaac Lakely, who are two excellent drivers, you really can't do anything. I mean, even if you have Kate Cunningham, the Kate Cunningham driving in, you two, you throw two, three bodies at him. What can you do? Really nothing. Totally. Yeah. Um, especially like with, with some of the shooters on this team, right? Uh, when you have a guy like Cade Cunningham, and this is something that you and I, I mean, we've talked about to to no to no end, right? Um, with Cade Cunningham's performance in high school, and and how some people might even not think he's a good shooter right. um, because you know he 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 opts for that that uh, you know that assist, right? He's he's a lot like you, Mister Tuma. Uh, when when you play basketball, uh, obviously maybe you're not to the stature of Cade Cunningham yet, but you'll you'll get there. Um, <laughs> but when, let's let's hone in a little bit on Cade, right? Sure. And how you think he meshed in with this team. I mean, you talked about it with with Fair and Flavors, um, with Keelan Boone too. These are two guys that proved to be pretty darn good shooters yesterday and, and two guys that can definitely fit this system. And I think going forward, you can see uh, Chris Harris. I might, even, I might even go out and say Avery Anderson might be one of these guys that, be, that might be able to um, get one of these shots on the outside. Do you think going forward, this three-point shooting is going to going to improve, uh, especially with Cade Cunningham and Isaac Likely dishing out the ball? Yeah, I think when you just watch the team, if you knew nothing about them, the confidence in which these guys were taking shots, despite the fact that the offense was, you know, I mean, it was cut down simple, right? But just the way the confidence, I mean, so even someone like Isaac Likely, who Avery Anderson, neither of them were known for three-point shooting last year, but mm-hmm. the fact that they can just step back and pull up with confidence, the mechanics look good. It's the confidence that really gets me. From Even from Cade's first shot, Cade could have went 0 for 10 from 3 yesterday, and I still would have been confident shooting ability. Sometimes you just watch shooters, just watch their confidence level pulling up, even if they miss the first three shots. You can tell, like, when I say confidence, I mean, watch them, their mechanics. Watch if they're ready to pull it when they're contested. If they're wide open and there's no hesitation, when they're contested lightly, are they ready to pull it on a pick and roll off the dribble? Are they ready to pull it? You see these things and you understand, okay, yeah, this guy is ready to shoot threes. That's yeah. what I do when I play pickup ball. That's who you pick up some of these things. Okay, yeah, this guy's ready to shoot. This guy isn't. And it's obviously not 100% right, but at the same time, that that's kind of what you see. And with Cade Cunningham, I, I said this in high school, I thought he was, you see this in video, but I need to repeat this. Like, Cade Cunningham, when he was in high school, the reason people assume that he doesn't have a jumper is he's so smart and he's obviously elite in the paint. And he's, he understands that that size and that athleticism and that talent, no one is going to stop when he drives in. And even if you're playing five feet off, he can still get past you and either f- score eat with ease or he'll get doubled and find a teammate every single time. So why would I take a shot? That's a lower percentage. Why would I take a jump shot, that which is a lower percentage, than drive in 
and score or find a guy wide open. And that's that's the IQ. That's the understanding of the game, knowing what you're playing with. But in, and this game shows his IQ once again. He understands, okay, yeah, this is college ball. This is a different level of defense. I can't just get past everyone. But it never bothered him. He always took the right move. He always got in, looked for guys. And here's the thing, you didn't even see the playmaking ability much yesterday. But you you saw the scoring ability and his ability to understand, okay, yeah, when guys aren't making shots or, hey, when, when there aren't the same passing lanes that there usually are, when when I'm being cut off, I got to just go through and score. It's it's like when I'm watching him again, you see Kate Cunningham, and there is no place for him to pass it. That would be a great shot. Sure, there are here and there, but it was the right shot. It, you, even you see him driving in against a single double team, the move and understanding. Because, yeah, you when you get doubled, obviously someone's open, but it doesn't mean it's always a good shot. Sometimes a Kate Cunningham drive with two bodies around him because he's that talented is a better shot, analytically, whatever. And that was the understanding. And I think three-point shooting is going to be a lot better going forward because they were all really good shots. You know some of these guys. Keelan Boone's a great shooter. Baron Flavor's obviously a great shooter. And you have other guys. Chris Harris, Avery Anderson, if he is better, as it looks like Isaac Likely. He only hit one. But, I mean, just the fact that it was just, again, you just look at the confidence, like I was saying before. You think about it last season, Isaac likely would be wide open and he would drive in. And, I'm, and I 100% agree with that. I always, everyone used to criticize him. Oh, why didn't he just take it? Because he's going to miss. <laughs> it's as simple as that. And I'd rather him drive in because he's that much of a big body. Even if you play eight feet off him, he can still, you know, cross over body into you, get to the paint or, or draw a double team and dish it out. That's the analytics, right? That you understand what shot is better. But if you're able to just hit one or two every so often, Teams have to respect you, and then it opens up the driving game. It opens up everything. And I think just overall, this team has a bunch of good shooters. Chris Harris, right? I mean, good good shooters. Donovan Williams, guys coming off the bench. Rondell Walker, I don't know if he had a field goal attempt, but he was an excellent shooter at PC West. Very good. I mean, one of their best for sure. And you have guys all, all over. I mean, once Bryce Williams comes back, that's another great shooter, another playmaker, yeah. another defender. I mean, think about it. That was a guy who didn't even play last night. You have a bunch of guys. Dude, I think – it's you it's good because when you have two drivers like this Isaac Likely Kate Cunningham you need that shooting on the outside and it's just going to make the offense flow so much better right and and another thing too is is that like you said with Isaac Likely I mean this is a guy who nationally I'd say has a very niche audience when it comes to people that recognize his his talent um but it is a national talent this is a guy who's one of the I'd say one of the premier point guards in the in one of the premier guards in all college basketball, right? Um, so when when you had sort of his hesitancy to shoot those threes last year, I don't think you'll have the same this year because and, and I know it's a misleading fifty percent from three. It's one for two, right? But the fact that he shot one is pretty darn insane because he didn't do that hardly at all last season, right? But when he did do it, and like the confidence in his shots yesterday in those two shots it looked just a whole heck of a lot better than it did last season let's just say this thank goodness that cam mcgriff is not on this team so that you know when Kay cunningham finds him open he, he's not shooting it because uh, i feel like he'd shoot it all the time <laughs> yeah and and every i mean look at matthew alexander Monkish. he did not do the same thing but on your point with, with isaac you're right because even the one he missed it was just you felt a lot better about it. His mechanics again look better and then he's he's like slightly contested or not contested, but just a lack of hesitation, ready to shoot it. That's just that is what is fruition. That just that's what looks good. That's what helps and says, okay, yeah, this guy knows what he's doing. And I mean, in the first half, everyone's like, man, he's having a bad game. But I mean, here's the thing: he's gonna have those sort of statistic statistical games when you're playing next to Kate Cunningham, where this guy becomes a secondary playmaker. And his at his heart, he is much more of a playmaker than he is a than he is a scorer. And that's fine. And he can operate out of the post. He can do these things. And like we talked about the simplicity in offense. What I kept seeing was, you know, pick and roll. You had guys crash the boards, which was, you know, became the source of offense. And then other guys just posting up one-on-one, which we'll get to again later. But it was just that sort of thing. And Isaac Likely fits into that. Where Kate Cunningham is a ball in the post or up top. He uh, Ice can, you know, be down low. He's that second playmaker. And here's here's the, the fundamental of basketball. Say Kate Cunningham is driving in. He, and Isaac Likely's out to the left of the corner. You know, and Isaac Likely obviously has a defender who probably doesn't respect his shot. Maybe that defender's 10 feet off. K drives in a little bit. That defender turns his head or, or that defender just like squeezes in two feet. What does that do? Because our K, you know, that defender squeezes in, K passes that to the left. What does that do? It gets Isaac Likely just a matchup against an unset defender. You know, those little things. That's what creates dribble drive penetration. It's not an open shot, 
it might not be an assist in the category, but that's what that's the impact of cage hunting, and that's the impact of a driver because you pass to an Isaac Likely or whoever on the outside for that matter, and Isaac Likely can just you know is driving and first of all he can drive in one on one on most people, but then you get him against an unset defender. That's very difficult for any defender, and that's the impact of it. That's why these two mesh so well because they understand okay if I can't take this shot, I can still go against an unset unset defense. That's how dribble drive penetration is created off passes. Yeah, it is. And and also, like, unlikely, I mean, people will talk about him having a bad game. Oh, my gosh. I mean, you just look at the stat line alone. This looks like a – tell me I'm wrong. This looks like a Draymond Green stat line. I mean, this sure. – nine points. You look at seven assists. You look at 13 rebounds, a career high for him. I mean, that's pretty darn impressive because – Going into this, um, you know, one of the biggest takeaways from this is the rebounding battle uh, for, you know, OSU versus UT Arlington. I believe it was 54 to, uh, to 33 in terms of total rebounds. And Isaac Likely was a huge part of that. Crashing the boards was a crucial, crucial thing uh, for this team, especially on the defensive side of the ball. I mean, this is just outstanding. They, they, they out-rebounded them 40 to 26 on the defensive side of the ball. I mean, in terms of defensive rebounding. And a lot of that goes in part to Isaac Likely just playing, looking, you know, obviously last year with him trying to drive in the paint, right? You saw that physicality in his game. You saw, you know, like you said, with, with these dribble drives, dribble drive penetrations, you can see that in his offensive side of the game. But defensively, too, he knows how to crash the boards, too, and he knows how to get down there and get gritty, despite having some size disadvantages this year, which OSU is going to face all season long. Yeah, and that's the thing. I mean, as an overall vote, I think they maybe out rebounded them by close to 20. Yeah. But this, yeah, it's crazy because coming into the game or coming into the season, Mike Boynton said one of the things, if not the most concerned about he was, was the defensive rebounding. Right. And he said, "I'm. it's not that we don't have the personnel. It's that we just don't understand the sense of urgency. And I understand that. Think about it. You have guys, Chris Harris, Avery Anderson, all these guys are guards, first off. Donovan Williams, guards. But even if you are a big man, you're not – even if you are a small forward who has the size to do it or who has the route rebounding ability, who you might average six, seven rebounds per game in high school, which is really good, but you're not counted on to be the primary rebounder. That's a very different role. You're used to instinctually just running back on, on in transition because you have guys that are going to rebound and then push the ball, right? That's what's going through your head. So suddenly you're asked to rebound the whole thing. It just doesn't feel natural. I get it. But it seems like they really figured it out. And it wasn't just the fact that, oh, it was UT and they out-rebounded them. Sure. It's the fact that you saw guys crash boards relentlessly. You saw the boxing out. Obviously, from time to time, there were slips. But you have the personnel straight up. You have a six-five strong, physical Isaac Likely. You have a Keelan mm-hmm. Boone who's boying in. And then you have Matthew Alexander Moncrief, I think, may just be this team's best rebounder at exactly. the end of the season. He is- yeah, he is tenacious. His motor is relentless. I mean, he is – and he's just constantly – you see him. If you just watch him in any game in Canada, he is the one who's like – he'll be 20, 30 feet out and will be running in as soon as the ball goes up. He'll crash his own misses. He'll crash his teammates' misses. He'll crash the defensive board everywhere. And he's athletic. He is strong. And, I mean, that's what I'm saying. It was, it was really – what I loved last night was you had three guys in double digits rebounds, I believe. Mm-hmm. And – it was just a team effort. It really was where whoever was closest, it was understanding, okay, I'm there. Let me box out and get the ball. And then you have so many guards that in transition, you don't, Kate Cunningham doesn't need to be the one pushing the ball down. Think about it. You got fair and flavors, Isaac likely and uh, Kate on the floor, even Keelan Boone. That's four guys that can dribble the ball down the yeah. court. So that just helps your advantage in transition. I mean, think about it. Even Avery Anderson, Chris Harris, Don Williams, all of these guys, right? You have so much, you have, so, and there's times where Kate and Ice were even playing them four and five, I believe, because you could just switch so many guards around. And and the, what I love there is that'll help this team so much because when you talk about the size advantage, it's not, or disadvantage, excuse me, it's not just about their defense. It's more about the rebounding because in 2020, it's about team defense. You don't really see individual defenders so much, but you see that rebounding can struggle. That's where you can really suffer if you don't lock down and understand and fundamentally play and box out, obviously you're never going to have the same size advantage. And you're always going to be at this much of a disadvantage, but you are going to need to clamp down. And this team really did. And it was, again, it wasn't just the numbers. It was the fact that they were constantly running in, crashing hard, boxing out and being tenacious on the boards. And I think that was a big part of this game. Just think about how they not gotten those rebounds. Imagine where this game could have been. 
Right. Totally. And and some of these guys too, that are their bigger guys uh, on OSU, like uh, Matthew Alexander Moncrief, you talk about his motor. I mean, that's something that's going to keep them in games this year. I, I truly think that because sure. I mean, I started uh, cut you off, but you say bigger and he's six, seven. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. And, you know, Kate Cunningham, their starting point guard's bigger than that. Right. So right. They, this is going to be an interesting season. I mean, you talk about him being one of their bigger guys. It's like Baylor last season, right. Where, where Gillespie was one of their biggest guys at six, eight. Um, and that, that even that is like super small in, in terms of basketball. Um, and Matthew Alexander Moncrief, though, a high motor guy, a guy who can defend down low, a guy who can defend in the low post and also on offense in the low post too. I think the only thing that I, I just, we, we freaking got to hone in with Matthew Alexander Moncrief that Mike Boyne has to hone in on, on is those free throws. I mean, you take away his 1% yeah. free throw shooting and this is, the, the totals for OSU just look a whole heck of a lot different. Um, people talked about the free throws yesterday. You take away that, it's 13 to 20. It's a whole different uh, ball game with that. No doubt. Yeah, the free throws are definitely a concern. And, and they're a concern for a, a bunch of this team, of course. Sure. Yeah, that's and it just it looked wonky. It did. When he <laughs> released the ball, it was it was bad. The, the mechanics on the free throws didn't look great. That's something I'm sure they're going to work on. But, I mean, forget the free throws for a second. This guy is definitely a monster down low. Mm-hmm. And he's not a monster like like Bernard Kumo, right? He's not like Cam, I mean, Cameron Griffey. He's not even like any of these traditional big guys because that's really being stepped away from in 2020. But he is what a post player needs to be in 2020 if they hope to succeed. Mm-hmm. You see him from, you know, the high post, from the baseline, his ability. I love his drop step for sure. His spin move, uh, dare the post spin. But his footwork is tremendous. That's what I really honed on last night. His footwork is awesome. That's, I think, that what gets him so such great position. And that's what keeps him so balanced and so under control. He's not, you know, he's not like, at times, Cameron Griff is kind of spinning out of control or moving out of control, right? But this guy is definitely under control, and he is great in the post. And I, I, thought, I was really impressed with how polished he was in the post. Because you watch Canada, and most of what he did was dribble, or, yeah, dribble drives from the outside, from the high post, driving in. And he is a tremendous this driver and you saw one or two plays of that last night but he mostly did his work from the post which is awesome because when you have when you have so many guards you have so much penetration from outside and three-point shooting just having that low post presence or just having that sort of change up changes up the complexion of the defense it changes up the way you have to defend it, it just gives the defense an offense sorry it gives the offense another thing to think about when you have mismatches you can attack them and here's the thing you don't just need a smaller guy in Matthew Alexander Moncrief even if you have an an app defender. This guy is so talented. I've seen his, his moves are great. He's athletic, and he's a, and his ability to finish is awesome. And again, when he misses, he just goes up and gets his own rebound. <laughs> it's that sort of thing. And it was great because that was one of the big things that pushed this offense when they were kind of struggling end of the first uh, half, beginning of second quarter. This guy, came, or mostly second half, excuse me, he was the stabilizing presence that gave them another thing, right? where you can hand him the ball and let him score. And in a day where, like I said, the offense wasn't – there wasn't a lot of off-ball motion. There wasn't a lot right. of these sort of concepts. But this guy yeah. really did it, and he gave them a true boost. And it's great moving forward. I mean, I, I swear I would have thought that he would have started. Yeah. But he came off the bench, and with he just played the same motor, the same everything that you normally – you want to see. And he played a lot of that five as well, which is awesome. And I think it's it's great to have a guy like that on the floor because it's that sort of energy is contagious. When you have that guy rebounding and you see pe- and people see it, not only is that oh this guy's a great teammate and a great hustler, you kind of you want to be a part of that. You do, and it's great to have that sort of presence out there. And he was just tremendous for his team, and he was awesome. It's crucial to have that kind of guy out there, right down there, down low, especially. Um, and he's a guy too that it's it's a it's a mix of uh, it's a mix of strength it's a mix of finesse down there uh, in the low right. post and it's something you really want to see it's it's a modern day uh type of big man for or type of forward for that um and and like you said it was shocking to me too after the fact i was like wait he had to have started right and right. and it was really interesting um and i know you and i said it last night you said um during it you were like if this guy plays and, and he plays well enough as uh, um as many people think he can this season this is a guy who could be drafted uh, that j- just oh the- yeah yeah no doubt and on i mean on the point like you talked about now that you talked about the drives a little bit it, it sparked something in my mind i remember watching the film of him in canada watching a full game you see this guy is a full package as a driver you know when i said I, I was surprised by the post presence i was because my main thing my draw away from him was he's got the euro steps the side steps the spin moves in the, in the uh post he's got the strength to finish but he's also he also had like a deceptive finish i uh, sorry finesse 
when he would be there and you would you would have him defend it so well that he was uh like he was trying to body through you and suddenly he would extend his arm and it was just the great finesse to get to the rim you would right. see those sort of things and now mike boyden has done such this coaching i don't know if, you know maybe it was just the game i watched where he didn't you know post up but i mean mike boyden this this team have really done a great job with him and his post presence looks very polished that's why i'm impressed by the footwork the iq i mean the understanding of when to attack how to attack because sometimes guys especially in the post they'll put their head down and just attack and they'll get their ball stolen from them and there were a lot of balls stolen you know pick pockets but for matthew alexander mockers that didn't happen and you're right the athleticism the strength he's got all those traits and that's just another guy that you can really add and that can score and yeah he's gonna be a big part of his offense right and and you mentioned it there too <laughs> there was a lot of balls stolen there, there was a lot of turnovers in this game yeah um, when you look at some of these turnovers, right, do you sort of look at these through a, through a microscope and, and are overcritical of them? Or do you look at them like on a surface level and say, this could be a big problem for this team going forward this year? Because I mean, there's some players that, 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 you know, obviously Cade Cunningham plays with a good poise. Um, Isaac Likely, I think plays with a good poise. Um, but there's some players that are sort of wild cards and, and that are, you know, getting more experience and stuff like that. Um, that these turnovers could be a big problem for this year. You know, maybe over, uh, I guess, eagerness to to drive to the paint or to to dish the ball out and, and try to force opportunities. Do you think that this could be a problem for the team going forward? Yeah, it's a good question. And I think it really is a little bit of both in some sense where, you know, I talked about before when Keith Cunningham started to really take over. And I don't know if we hand this enough, just his understanding of, okay, this, this subtle understanding of, okay, my team needs me to do this. And it wasn't even a click of someone really just saying like, oh yeah, I need to do this. I'm Kate Cunningham. It's it's a really subtle understanding of, and the IQ to understand, okay, our threes are not going in. Our offense is a bit stagnant. It's let me drive in, even though these are double teams, let me let me do this. And here's the thing, people said he was passive early. I don't think he was. He was 0 for 5 or whatever. He was missing, yeah. but he was still driving. He was still attacking. Sure. And it became the point of, it really becomes a little bit of both. Like I said, one is the UT Arlington defense. I mean, let's give them credit. What was the turnover margin? Maybe 18 to 5 or something like that. Yes. Um, 18 turnovers, of course. That's a lot. And a lot of them were silly. I mean, here's the thing. There were some of them that just passes that shouldn't have been made. You have to be smarter. Those I'll be critical in the sense of, like I was saying in the video before, there are bad turnovers. There are turnovers and there are bad turnovers. Ones where if you're at the top of the key, you pass your team in the left, the defense swats it, they, they tip it. And then suddenly they're on a fast break. No one is, and all the entire, you know, the defense gets it. They're on a string and everyone else is behind them. That's a bad turnover because it's leading to a wide open basket on a fast break. That is a terrible turnover. Okay. Ones are when you're driving in, or if you're trying to make a, you know, tough pass and um, contest in, you know, in a contested with guys around, but you know, it gets stolen. It's tough in traffic. Obviously, there's no such thing as a good turnover, but you can be okay with that. You know, like a guy is trying to make a play. A stupid one is, hey, you're driving with your head down and you got three guys around you and they just steal it. There wasn't really much of that. There was just such good. I mean, these UT Arlington guys had such great hands on defense and were just swatting at the ball, but they did it so succinctly. Very few fouls. Most of the time they were swatting right at the ball and got it. And it was like Caleb Boone would get it half a second later. He lost it. And it's just tough to really. And some of them were tough. And some of them were such great defense where you would try to pass in the middle and just, you know, some of them were, and it looks like, like the Avery Anderson one at the top of the key where he throws it up and it gets stolen. I mean, that guy jumped really high for UT Arlington. Like <laughs> there are some of them where there, there's a little bit of wishy washiness. Okay. Maybe you shouldn't have thrown it, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. but it's, it's one of those things. There are some of them that were bad for sure. And it's one of those things you correct, but you know, these guys just, it was just a thing of, I don't know how ready they were because under normal circumstances, these guys understand why would I pass it to this guy? My def yeah. the defender's right there. But UT Arlington probably wasn't that like you know that crazy of a team coming in scouting. I don't know. I mean, again, I'm guessing, but there was a little bit of that is something you need to correct. But a lot of a lot of credit to this. The reason I brought Kate Cunningham up before was UT Arlington. I mean, you guy had five turnovers. He realized early on that, okay, if I'm double team, I can't just pass to my teammate and everything will be golden. I have to attack the rim and I have to score because uh, those guys aren't making baskets right now. Because right. even if he had passed to Isaac Likely on the outside, Isaac Likely would drive in and he'd be double team too. But who, who's the – I mean, I, I love Isaac Likely, but who's the better bet right there? Cade Cunningham's double team or Isaac Likely against the double team? Totally. And, and if you go in your Cade Cunningham six out of ten times, you get to the rim through traffic, through a double team and score, and then a few times you lose a ball. I mean, that'd be a good measure the way defense was playing. And I think that has to be taken into account. 
Now, obviously, like I said, there are some bad turnovers which need to be cut out, but that's really just a mental thing and an understanding thing, and it's good. It really is because in a test like this early on, you learn, okay, yeah, these are some of our flaws. These are some of the things we have to fix, and once they do, they will definitely be golden. But like I said, you have such an advantage because you have so many guards, and they'll be understanding to pick their, pick their, you know, pick their spots, get into the paint, then get easier passes. But a lot of defenses are not going to be this tenacious. But, I mean, I have to really give credit to UT Arlington. They, they are tenacious. And like I said, their weak side help is one of the smoothest I think I've ever seen, where <laughs> you would have a defender already sliding in the moment Cade Cunningham would have one or two dribbles into the paint. And it was like there was really no, like, exposure. UT, uh, UT Arlington rotated so well. So if someone came from the weak side, someone else would rotate there. And then the rotations were so smooth that it was really difficult. It really was. So Cade or Isaac Likely or whoever would get into the paint and you have guys all over you and that's a difficult proposition especially when they were in that matchup zone they were definitely matched up you saw they they, they switched so well it was the same it really was and that is a difficult thing to defend i mean to score against and like i said i think it really does go both ways yeah i think th- that ut arlington defense was absolutely incredible i mean you look yeah. at the way they were able to help on defense and, and like you said all these switches were outstanding um especially from a team that's really wasn't a really highly prolific team in that Sunbelt conference. So yeah. kudos to them and kudos to their coach, obviously the Sunbelt coach of the year back in 2018. Uh, very interesting statistic there. Um, but when you sort of look at some of these guys, right, you talk about uh, OSU's guard heavy nature, right? There's, I feel like every freaking player on this team is a guard. You know what I mean? And, and to an extent that I bet you they've all played guard at some point. Um but somebody that stuck out yesterday, Keelan Boone really played very well. I mean, um, the way he was able to, you know, drive in and and shoot from the mid-range, right? Um, maybe not necessarily from three, but but he was able to, you know, put some of these shots up and he'll get better. He'll improve as the season goes along. Um, but he was someone that I think was the superior Boone yesterday. I mean, statistically and just when you looked at him all around, what do you see from Keelan Boone, um, especially when you talk about, you know, some of some of his shooting abilities, some of his driving abilities, and I think rebounding is where he shined yesterday too. I I agree with you 100%. Um, um, that, that when you um, when you look at Keelan Boone last year, he was just, you know, that spot-up shooter who gave you that good pres- who gave you a good presence outside. That's what he, a lot of he did it in Tulsa. Yeah. But what he really showed yesterday was that rebounding. We saw, we said in the video yesterday when Mike Boyden initially told us that those guys are different players, Keelan Boone is the better rebounder. Yeah. I swear he misspoke. I swear. <laughs> I swear he misspoke. Even now. <laughs> right. Even I mean, but now you see it and you're thinking, well, okay, yeah, that makes complete sense. And when you go back and watch it, you see Keelan Boone crashing the boards. You see him from the three-point line running in on offense, on defense, and especially on offense. I mean, that was what like, surprised me. He's a guard, essentially, right, who's out there shooting threes. And then he's running in after after – Katie Honeyham or whoever shoots a three or drives in and he, him and Matthew Alexander Moncrief are creeping in ready for rebounds on defense. They're using the length, the strength, the strength is surprising. I mean, get it, grabbing the rebounds for sure. And then the one drive you talk about where he gets in the paint, he bumps the guy a little bit, gets a little bit, get creates enough space, pulls up. That's a difficult shot. It was a good hop step, great drivability. I mean, I didn't know he had that in him, but he drives in there. He gets, he, like I said, he uh, nice hop step gets in there and then puts a nice shot up. And I mean, again, that's even with the hop step, it's still a difficult shot. That's something you train for. I mean, but if you can do that, those sort of dribble drive opportunities will open up immensely with Cade and Isaac Likely and even Avery Anderson, Chris Harris, because these guys can penetrate and change how defenses are. You know, like I was talking about with the Isaac Likely example, get a guy two feet off the spot. You do that for Keelan Boone now, and that opens up things as well. And he's just a great spot up shooter. And I mean, great. I mean, I, again, I, I was surprised why Matthew Alexander Moncrief was um, benched for Keelan. Well, not bet. We shouldn't say benched because he wasn't benched. But we assumed that Matthew Alexander Moncrief would start. But with Keelan Boone starting, that was that was interesting. And I think now it makes so much sense because he gave him that defensive rebounding presence. But also he gave them um, a defensive presence and a three-point shooting presence. You got, th- th- you know, you got Baron Flavors and Keelan Boone there. And then Isaac Likely and Cade were doing enough as a shooter, Cade especially. That gives you some good shooting out there. Then I, you're right. I mean, Caleb Boone was definitely the less impressive Boone. Uh, Keelan was just that good, right? And I think going forward, this is this is a great – this is just shows what he can do and how he'll be. And I, I'm really excited for Keelan Boone. 
Yeah, I'm excited for him too. I mean, especially with with Boynton uh, giving him all this praise, right? He must have worked his tail off this offseason and uh, it proved uh, obviously with him starting and in the performance he gave the other day. Um, when you look at these other second year guys too, some people that stuck out to me, I mean, Chris Harris Jr. is someone that I think shooting wise can be one of the best players this year, right? Um, and, and one of those guys off the bench that that really defensively and shooting wise can can make an impact. Um, and then Avery Anderson too, just his eagerness to drive in, his eagerness to even get a, a, a better shooting performance, right? He's someone that can mesh in with this offense and defensively too. I think I, I really like him as well. He's somebody that is, is, I hate to use the word pesky, but pesky. I mean, he really is. And he's someone, um, there, there's other, you know, sophomores uh, that, that this is one of my favorite classes. I mean, you look oh, at the, the freshman coming in, obviously Cade Cunningham sticks out, but this sophomore class just for some reason, I mean, they, they were obviously so highly uh, recruited and, and they're a highly rated class, but man, I think these guys are really going to be, you know, the, the heart and soul of this team, right? These are some of the guys, like the guys off the bench, these sophomores, um, with Caleb Boone, you know, with Keelan Boone, right? With uh, Avery Anderson, Chris Harris. What did you see from them yesterday and how they've been able to sort of progress on um, in their own careers? Yeah, I mean, Keelan, obviously, we just went on about. Sure, of course. Caleb, again, it, it was one of the things, I mean, it wasn't much to be impressed about, but there wasn't much to be hated about either. It's And it was a lot of it was a product to, of the fact that UT had to play defense the way it did and how ha- hounding they were. We talked about the drives. But in the post, too, when Keelan Bone was down there, there's just three, four bodies around there that can rotate back in a second. And there wasn't much space for, for him to operate. You saw the early tip on the rebound. You see the energy and athleticism. So it's like you like what you see. I just can't say good or bad for him because just because of how the how it was for um, the way you trying to play defense. But I am excited to see if Caleb Boone progress in the post and if he can be that post, post presence down there with Matthew Alexander Munker. Gives them another option. But yeah, Avery and Chris Harris, I'm very excited about. Um, I always said last year before the ACL tear, which is obviously devastating, I thought Chris Harris was one of my favorite players for sure because he is his IQ 100%, but his defensive IQ is really, really impresses me. Uh, there was one play where he gets not beat, but the guy defend, I guess, kind of gets beat a little bit, uh, mm-hmm. and then on drive, and then Chris Harris just washing him on, you know, kind of just. You know, keeps his lateral movement up, keeps going along with him. And then when the guy goes up for a shot, swats at the ball. Now, I personally love that because I do that all the time when I play basketball. That's the IQ. It's the understanding of not panicking and just worrying about getting back in front of your defender. But understanding the ball is most exposed when you go up for a shot. Not for everyone, but for most most drivers, almost all drivers, when they're driving in, that ball is most exposed when you're going up for a layup. And then you just find the ball target it and just knowing that is not enough you have to have the iq the understanding and the instincts to know when the ball is exposed because as as it's exposed you could also easily pick up a foul you got to understand where that ball is and put yourself in good position to find the ball hit it and it locks loose and that's just as good as a steal it really is because either it goes out of bounds or you know it uh well not, well, not go out of bounds but you get rid of that ball and that's honestly just as good as a steal and it is great defense and i saw it a lot last year where he, is under, he understands really well passing lanes, covering guys. I think he's really good, and he's obviously a really good shooter, as Mike Boyne has said. And as a driver, too, there's a lot of uh, good balance, and he's athletic enough, and he's got some spin moves, some euros. He's got some talent, for sure, and I'm excited for Chris Harris this year. And I am too, Avery yeah. Anderson. Yeah, Avery yeah. Anderson's the last one. Let's not forget about him. You're right, pesky, right? <laughs> I mean, this guy has a Patrick Beverly comparison last yep. year. He, You see him just... You know, he is nagging guys from half court, from three-quarters court. He is hounding them. Cade and Isaac Likely are bigger guys who are excellent defenders. But Avery Anderson is a different type of defender. He really is, where he will hound you from a long time. He will commit that side, and he is high energy. That's that's what we've known about him since day one. It's gotten him some trouble, but he's also high energy, and that is a good thing at times, especially on defense, where he's hounding you, and he's making life difficult for you. And that, that does more than just get some turnovers. It gets in your head. It really does. That's why the Patrick Beverly comparisons come, for me at least, because he's not just a guy who's a great defender, but that will get in your head and change the way you dribble, change the way you attack because of that, because you know a guy like that is coming. You don't want to lose the ball. So that's the thing. But then on, on, on offense, I already loved his ability to get to the rim and also his mid-range, his pull-up mid-range, is, I, I thought last year was easily the best on the team. Um, this year, maybe there's some other talented guys, but huh? he's still got that in his arsenal. And then you saw the three-point shot, and it looked smooth. It looked clean. And if he makes that, 
that is big for the team. That's just another shooter in an era where shooting is so important. I am excited for the second year, guys. That's why when the nation, when national people just look at this and say, okay, yeah, this is just Kate Cunningham, it, to me, it's absolutely silly. Because, Ask I mean, it's tough because it, it really is. <laughs> it really is. Because these – because, A, I get it because you can't predict development. I mean, that's the hardest thing to predict in all sports. It really is. But at the same time, they're all positive regression. I mean, you talk about second-year guys who – who, who were all almost all except Chris Harris because he played next to a guy named Tyrese Maxey, who were all the best player in their high school, right? Um, I mean, besides the Boone Twins, one of them was <laughs> one of them was better, obviously. But overall, I mean, these are guys who have so much talent in high school. It was just understanding how to how to play in the college level. And let's not forget, for a majority of the season, they either they either had they had either lost their point guard and didn't really have another solid backup, or they just, um, you know, they were playing with the point guard, Isaac Lyke, who came back and just was not the same. And also, I mean, this offense, you had three seniors who just graduated, who took a majority of the, the ball handling, right? They, they touched the ball. The most of the touches on this team went to those three guys. Now those guys are gone. These second-year guys are going to be so key going forward. Totally. And you're right. These, the, I mean, just with some of these nuances that they have, right, some of these things that they have in, uh, in their skill sets, like, these second-year guys are going to add a tremendous element. You talk about Avery Anderson's uh, mid-range jump shot. Uh, that is going to be huge because, like you said, there's more talented guys in this team this year. You know, you look at guys like Baron Flavors uh, and obviously Cade Cunningham. The, these are guys that can shoot. And um, the fact that that was already one of the best uh, elements to Avery Anderson's game last year and one of the best elements on this team last year, um, and, and you add even more talent around that and you still have that, that's huge going forward for OSU. Um, <laughs> Let's finish off though, Sadiq. Let's finish off with some defense. Let's talk some defense. Uh, and and what did you see from? Because this is obviously this is one of Mike Boynton's favorite things to to uh, to have. Right? Like he, this is his identity. This is his brand. He loves defense. Um, and he literally even put it on the shorts, right? Uh, and that's one of the things that that makes him such such a special coach. What did you see from the defense yesterday? Because I mean, you talk about some of the slow starts for this team. That's sort of what it is. It's just an emphasis on defense. And that sort of last season, I remember, um, all these low-scoring games you'd see, and you'd see some of these slow starts offensively for this team. Well, a lot of that was because of the defense, the emphasis on the defense, right? Um, and you sort of saw a little bit of that yesterday, but you saw some offensive explosion as well. What did you see from the defense yesterday? I thought, like I said before, the defense played so well, I think. I mean, they held them to, what, 30 30- eight percent shooting i didn't even need a number to think they played well i mean you saw the rotations they were square guys were going one-on-one well i mean first of all if you have a bunch of tremendous defenders from avery anderson to kate cunningham to isaac likely you've got great defenders but you see the rotations the weak side helped there was you know watching yesterday especially especially yesterday night watching second time there was almost no there was i would say close to zero um layups that were not contested with, I mean, whether you didn't block them or not, there was a second guy there close to it. And every drive, the rotations were so smooth. They were able to switch seamlessly. And then, you know, on a pick and roll, you would hedge enough to let your defender go back. Then when the roller would run, you had to pick up a guy, pick up there. You would double, triple the post real quick. And their defense was so smooth and so strong. And I think they were really playing with cohesion and playing well. And at times you lacked that last year where guys just weren't committing to team defense. And like I keep saying, like every week in 2020 team defense has taken over individual defenders are important but they really are not important as they were before coaching really breeds good defense when when a team is not a good defense uh defensive team i i point to the coach before i point to the players most times because that's what it is but mike boyton i mean let's not forget this also last year when they were eight and no or seven no whatever with isaac likely they were a top 50 de- defensive team i believe um, then it, I mean that's out of 350 teams like that's really good and that was before Isaac Likely went down when he did there was a, it was a different measure but now you have so many great defenders you have a team that's committing you saw so many different things whether it's half court press you saw uh, you know pressure at the point of attack when the ball would come across half court you saw some three quarters pressure you saw different different things but in the half court at its core I love the personnel because even though you're small that works to your, exa- to your advantage you talk about Baylor this reminds me a lot of that yeah. because Freddie Gillespie was, what, 6'8", their tallest player. Then you had four guards there. But the advantage was you could switch every single matchup, even 6'8", onto your point guard, because these guys were all so versatile. And sure, not everyone can keep up one-on-one, but that's the whole point. You double everything. You, you, you know, when, when guys are in bad spots, when they're in corners, you, you 
attack them. When they're in the post, you attack them. You put two, three guys. And Baylor ended up being one of the best defensive teams in the country. With this team, with this OSU team, you can do the same thing. Caleb Boone is essentially the same player. I mean, I'm not saying the same as Freddie Gillespie, but he sure. gives you that sort. I mean, he, on defense, it's reminiscent. An athletic, what, 6'9 guy who's, who's athletic, um, who's versatile, who can go and defend guards, and not to the same rate, but he's athletic enough where he's not like your where he's slow there, right? He's got athleticism, lateral quickness, uh, that sort of versatility. And the defense was excellent, I think, because you saw so many great ro- rotation switches. Obviously, there are some slow closeouts here and there, but those are little, little things that Mike Boyd will ha- hamper on. But as an overall boat, I think the switching was so good, the rotations, you see the help, the weak side help, and there just was very few drives that went uncontested. Now, most of them went in turnovers, went fast breaks, because well, I talked about this before, the turnovers. Man, the turnovers were, were where the where UT Arlington got majority of their offense. I think what UT Arlington had... 29 uh, points off turnovers, OSU at two. Yep. That, is, that number in itself shows you from those bad turnovers I talked about, that's how UT Arlington got so many shots off, so many good shots off. But in the half court or even just in semi-transition or even just transition period, you know, off a of miss, OSU got themselves set. They got back there and they played really good defense. And that's going to be great going forward. I really do believe that because going forward, you, you have all these um, – great defenders you already know that you have a great defensive coach who is obviously emphasizing defense it's always been a big part of him and you have guys that are committing on that side but here's the thing we I talked about the rebounding and how important that is because rebounding if you have the personnel even if they're six five they can be a great rebounder even if they're six eight they can rebound 12 rebounds a game they can they really can Mm -hmm. if they really lock down and get down there right and on defense it helps you even more because Oh, well, when even you have these sort of personnel with all the guys that they have, they can, like I talked about with Baylor, you can bring your guards down, you double, right? Like, say, say there's a big post, say there's as a bouquet from Kansas down there, right? You, when, when they're, when he's trying to post up, you front one guy, the, the guy who's defending him fronts him, then you bring weak side help behind him so you can't throw it over that defender and you neutralize him. And say they try to pass the other side of the court, you have athletic guards who are going to rotate fast enough as soon as the ball gets there. And then if he doesn't get there, someone else rotates, and then another person rotates. That's how you play team defense. That's how you play elite defense in 2020. And that is the outlook for this team going forward, right? That that, mm-hmm. that great defensive element, that great, you know, cohesive defensive element is going to be to bode well for these OSU Cowboys going forward. Uh, and we will see that go down. 6.30 p.m. Central Time uh, on Big 12 Now on ESPN Plus versus Texas Southern. Sadiq. I'm going to leave you with this. I'm going to leave you with a trivia question, okay? Are you ready for this trivia question? Of course. Okay, so who is Texas Southern's debatably most notable alumni, okay? I'll give you a hint. He was a defensive end for the New York Giants, and he was a, he's now a Good Morning America host. Michael Strahan? Yeah, you got it, man. Congratulations. <laughs> oh, happy really? Birthday. He went to Texas Southern? Texas Southern, baby. That's who OSU plays next. Uh, their their home debut uh, at Gallagher Arena this Saturday against the Texas Southern Tigers. Uh, and we will see that great team defense um, in Mike Boynton's squad. But that is all we have for today, ladies and gentlemen. Happy Thanksgiving. Have a great day. Have a great weekend. And thank you for tuning in.